so far some of the parts arrived the rest of the parts should be here today so hopefully we get this truck back on the road today here is the wheel nut kit and here is the pinion nut i got a new seal new crush washer just in case i gotta do it twice so all these are the original aam parts so i'll start getting the wheel bearings on and then we'll go from there and hopefully the gear set will get here soon one of the last steps we gotta do is take the pinion bearing off the pinion so we can get the shim so we get started on the new gears i'm gonna try this setup i'm not sure if it's gonna work i got a large bearing splitter the pinion did not fit between the opening of the 20 ton press so i had to jack it up on woods and we'll see if this bad boy comes out So just to show you what we're looking for, this is the bearing after we pressed it off. This is where it goes. Right here, there's a shim. That's what we need right there. Take the bearing off, take the shim. And this is what we're gonna need to install the new gear set. And that should get you as close to good on the gear pattern. On this shim, I noticed that when they pressed it, it must have gone in a little bit crooked. And it kind of got a little raised area there. So I'm going to file that flat to make sure that when the bearing goes on, it's seated nice and flat against this and not on that ridge. Here it is after I grinded it smooth. I checked it with the micrometer to make sure I didn't take off too much. And uh, pretty much just took off from the center. I didn't take anything out from the outer edge. So when the bearing hits it, so should be... Alright, so here we are. We're going to install the pinion race here's the pinion driver for the race driver make sure that's clean clean up the race and go in here let's make sure this is still clean Sure you start it nice and square. Just to give you a little bit of a different view of the new race and how the new race looks versus the old one that came out. Old one's got all those vertical lines in it. I was looking at a couple bearing pictures and they say that those little like pinholes are called bruising from having contaminants in the oil. Alright, just thought that would be cool to see. Alright, so I stopped fighting that rear pinion bearing race. I uh, took it back out, put it in the freezer. Should be much easier to install once it's frozen. So in the meantime, I'm going to be doing this trick I saw on another guy's YouTube that he did it rebuilding his rear end. This is the crush sleeve that came out. This is the new crush sleeve. You can see the size difference. What he did, he puts it in the press, the new one, and he crushes the new one where it's still slightly bigger than the old one. That way you do the final crush installed. But you don't have to crush the whole thing. Because trust me, these are a pain in the butt. I did it on an 8.5 and it whooped my butt. So I only imagine this one's way bigger. It's going to be way harder. So let me get to crushing a little bit and we'll see what happens. Much closer in size. So now I just gotta squeeze it down a little bit instead of a whole lot. We uh, start installing the carrier bearings on the carrier. Let me go get that. 
All right, there's the Healy coil gear, limited slip. I'm gonna do a quick inspection because the box was pretty damaged when it came in. And that's nice. $1,000 for a locker made in Taiwan. And this is the e Eden brand too. It's not a cheapy brand. All right, looks pretty good. Let me get the bearing. Again, make sure everything's clean. Another way you could do this, which I did on the 8.5, is you put the bearings in the oven at 400 degrees for about 30 minutes. And they'll just about slide on all the way. You might have to tap them a little bit, but they'll go the majority of the way. All right, it looks like the inner part of the bearing is actually higher than the cage, so we shouldn't do any damage by just pressing it in. Might have to go down. Yeah, we're gonna have to go past it. Let me check the old one. I got one of the old wheel bearing races. It fits on the inside part of the bearing so we can finish driving it on. It is a hair bigger, so you gotta make sure that it's on the bearing evenly all the way around. So you don't push that through. Spinning the bearing the whole time just to make sure I'm not putting any pressure on that cage. And there it is, bottomed out. Let's get a closer look. See that bearing has to go a little bit past where that plate would be and you can see there the bearings bottomed out let's turn around and get the other one done alrighty now that bearing on the other on the old carrier actually looks like it's flush to the top so we'll see what this one looks like <laughs> looks like it's pretty close to being bottomed out I'm just gonna double check by putting that race on there that bearing make sure you're not putting any pressure on the cage and that's bottomed out so on the side that the ring gear goes on you see that it is flush on top and I got the bearing seated all the way. All right, so next, pretty much got to wait for the gears to get here. Let me go see in the freezer how cold that uh, race is for the pinion. See if we get that installed. All right, here's our race out of the freezer. It is very cold. Let's get it in there. I also got the extension on it this time. Seems like that's as far as I get it every time. Never really get it past this area. Let me try driving the top out back. See if I can get it like that.
once you get it square it goes right in but it's kind of really hard to tell when it's all the way in there it went in the first two hits Now it's too tight on the bottom, not tight on the top. Can't win. All right, I'm gonna hit it once back on the bottom. Put your finger in there and you can more or less tell where the gap's tighter or not. Still a little tighter on the bottom. Let's see. Now it's going. You hear that difference in noise? That's all the way in. Make sure there's no space between that bearing race. And the housing. I'll just give it one more for good luck. And there it is. I'll clean it up now. We'll be ready for when the gear set comes. All right, so the gears finally came in today. This is the next day. I got this set up here. I got a two and a quarter pipe. The bearing. Make sure you push on that inside part and the shim under it. Make sure the shim is centered as possible. Now we're gonna push the pinion bearing on. Another way of doing this, if you don't have the press, which is what I did on the 8.5 I rebuilt, you put the pinion in the freezer, and you put the bearing again in the oven for about 15, 20 minutes at 400, and it will just about slide all the way on there. And that's bottom. <clears throat> Give you a look. Bottom of the bearing sitting right there on that shim. This is just a little piece of a pipe extension that they sold at AutoZone. I guess to delete a cat or something. Two and a quarter fit perfect for the 11 and a half. And I just slid the, the hole over and the bottom of the pipe actually touched up here and pushed down so I didn't have to put nothing in here. Alright, I got the uh, ring gear in the oven right now heating up so I can put it on the carrier there. Once we do that, we'll head to the truck and hopefully today will be the day we can drive it. So, let's go get that ring gear. Alright, I got this carrier set up. I got the new bolts from AAM also. And I have these ready. And when the ring gear's on there, you can line them up. At least some of them. Alright, I got one glove. I'm gonna go get it. Hopefully it'll go on there. Alright, here it is. As a side note, it's much better when your wife's not home when you do this. Because they don't complain about putting stuff in the oven if they're not home.
All right. Got a couple started in there. And as you can see, when it's hot, it goes right on there. I've seen some people kind of fight them. And these bolts also already come pre-done with red Loctite. If not, you have to put Loctite. I'm going to let that ring gear also cool down a little bit before I really start running it in. Yeah, Alright, so we'll let that cool a little bit. We'll come back tighten those bolts up Alright, so the ring gear is cool to the touch now you can see it doesn't even move up anymore So I'm first gonna just tighten them with the impact. There's no way I could torque these I think the torque spec is 175 foot-pounds. I don't have any way of grabbing this to be able to torque it So I'll torque it once it's in there I'll just snug them all up now. We'll get it in there And then we'll go over all the carrier bearing preloads and stuff like that All right, so we're ready to install the pinion. That's the pinion and all the parts we're gonna need. We're gonna need that inch pound gauge to set the preload. And first, let's get this seal right here. This seal. <clears throat> is this seal right here. So how we got it, we'll put the new one on. Let's see how we're gonna take it off. See, we can just push this on. Nope. All right, that's all the way down. That's actually what the seal rides on. It rides on that, not the uh, actual yoke itself. Clean it up. That way I make sure I don't have any doubts as far as what's new leak and old leak. Take this to the truck, get that pinion in. Almost did it again. Make sure you put your bearings in before you put the seals on. Alright, I got my wife on the bottom to hold the pinion. Get back in there. Mm -hmm. 
Hold it for there. Get the yoke on. New washer. I'm gonna have to push it more. Dang it, Chassie. Mm. Are they going to see if it still wobbles? That is pretty good. Let it, let it go. All right, you should be good. Just go in and out a little bit. Get the crush sleeve there. Let me see where I'm at as far as bearing preload. Yeah, barely got five. All right, so I tried the impact again and I hit it a couple times and I got about another quarter rotation. I'm gonna see what I got, it's much stiffer. I'm getting about 30, 35 inch pounds. It takes about 40 to start it. But what you want to look at is what it takes while you're rotating. So while we're rotating, we're there between 30 and 40. And the spec's 25 to 40, so that's good. And that's for new bearings. Gonna pump some oil into those bearings through the galley holes and get ready to put the carrier in. I'll say crushing that crush sleeve really helped. I only had to really fight it maybe a quarter turn instead of probably two or three turns. Again, this is the difference. This was the crush one that came out. This is a brand new one. So you would have to crush all of that with that pinion and trust me, it is not easy. All right, let's get the carrier. All right, so first, we're gonna start by installing the preload adjusters back into the housing. Man, this part's gonna suck. Gotta put the bearing caps on. Let's see how this is gonna work. I do not see this happening. I really don't want to drop anything and damage anything. This is a pain in the butt because these gotta come off, come stay on, and they want to fall off. I'm gonna try to put a rag down here to at least if I can get it in there, I can move it around. Make sure everything in there is clean. Let's put this rag in here. As long as I get it in there, 
and I'll figure a way to fend angle it. This is terrifying. It is crooked. There we go. Hallelujah. It is in. Now we look at our markings again. Looks like I got one indentation here. I got two indentations here. Need to find the one cap. The one indentation. I also drilled it a little bit to make it more obvious when I was installing it. And it is all clean. The indentation goes to the top. Booy, baby. This unit feels way heavier than the G80. You just want to start the bolts, you don't want to tighten it, because if you tighten it all the way, you're not going to be able to move the adjuster wheels now for the backlash and carry bearing preload. Two dots, two dots, dots go up. Not gonna lie, I went mountain biking this morning and I am exhausted. And after putting that in there, I can really use a nap. Oh, I'm so happy it's in there. <sighs> they gotta be kind of tight because. We need to set the We need to adjust the preloaders till we get zero backlash. So if you leave these bearings caps too loose, you're gonna get a false zero. So let me crank them down and come off like a quarter turn or so. There you can see it, it's moving free in there. All right, so according to the instructions that I found for a 14 bolt, in the right side adjusting nut and tighten the left side adjusting nut until the ring gear contacts the pinion without binding, this is zero backlash. So I would say the right nut's backed up as pretty much as far as it's gonna go. Now it wants us to push this adjuster this way. Let's just push it this way. Still getting a little bit of wobbling. Definitely zero backlash. 
But now it doesn't need to move, so that's too tight. That's the problem with... Gotta find the sweet spot. So we'll just try hand tight. Try coming back two notches. Let me tighten this up, see if we got zero backlash. It says should spin, which it did that way. But it doesn't want to spin the other way. Oh, god damn, this little thing. This little thing is busting my chops. Alright, so I'm going to call that zero backlash. Alright, so now it wants us to back off the left side adjusting nut approximately two slots. Install the left adjusting nut locking tool or locking clip. And it says tighten right side adjust nut until carrier is forced into solid contact with the left side. Alright, so let's loosen these a little bit. Right, so loosening two slots be clockwise. So it's one, two. It's in here to hold it. All right, so now I want this to bring out the adjuster on the right side till we push back the carrier here. What we're gonna do, we're gonna be adjusting this adjuster over here to push the carrier back this way till we make solid contact over here. And they want us to back it out, put it back to solid contact, and then they want us to tighten it two slots and that will give us the preload. And then we gotta check backlash after that. So let's see what we get. <clears throat> You really can't see. I just want to make sure that. Yeah. Alright, so that's going to be where it's at. Now i got to give it preload. So I'll count this hole as one, which is on the bottom of this. So I need this hole down here to be up here. So let me get a small hammer. One. Two, and I actually said 
three slots for new bearings. Three. Put the locking thing in there so nothing moves. It's definitely tight. And these back down. It's time for backlash. I'm just going to install this for the vice grip to have something to grab on. This will be the second special tool you need besides that inch pounder. And this is to check the backlash. All right, so I got the dollar indicator set up and so far I'm getting four thousandths of an inch. I go from zero to four and it stays nice and constant. So it's within spec, but they say five to eight is preferred. So I'm gonna loosen these up and uh, move it that way, one notch. Okay, so here every adjustment you do, pretty much what I'm gonna have to do here is loosen one slot here and tighten one slot here. What it's gonna do is move the whole rear end that way, away from the pinion. You don't have to put these clips back in because I don't think anything's gonna spin when you're checking backlash. But. All right, let's see. Zero this gauge out again. That's on zero. There we're getting five, six, seven. So that's pretty good. Let me loosen it up. They say to spin it. Try it somewhere else. Right, let me see if I can zero it out. Zero it out. Six. I think I bumped it. They were getting like five, six. All right, I'm happy with that. Time to tighten everything up. All right. And I'm just curious to see what the preload is. So let me go back to the pinion and check it out.
All right, so it did go up is about 40 to 45 inch pounds now to spin everything. Clean this all up so we can check our gear pattern. Just make sure there's no side to side play in this at all. Nice and tight. Brushes leaking hairs. Make sure you got full coverage on there. All right, so it says to spin the pinion by holding a load on the ring gear. So you don't want to just free floating. So we're gonna spin each way. And I got putting pressure on it so it's harder to spin. Nice, right there in the center. Let's go the other way, putting note on it also. And now you're gonna see where the pinion picked up paint. And where it puts the paint is exactly where the contact pattern is. If you look at it, it's pretty much a dead center of the tooth height wise and width wise and they actually say it's better to be a little bit inside because as it torques the pinion will try to drive out of the gear so let's see what it looks like where we painted it on the coast side and that looks pretty good also pretty much in the center of the gear a little bit to the inside let's see what it looks like where it painted it Perfect, look at that. Same right in the center. Usually when you use your stock pinion shim, it works out perfect. All right, let me get the torque wrench. I'm gonna get the axle seals in, the drive shafts on. And uh, that way I go torque the ring gear bolts down, torque these bolts down. I'm going to look up the spec just to make sure what it is. All right, so we got everything torqued up. I got the axles in. Mm, on both sides. Uh, what I did, torque the carrier bearing bolts from the top. And for the paint ring gears, I will put two out there, tie, uh, have my wife hold the brakes, tighten them, torque them, spin it, torque them, spin it, torque them, spin it, torque them. So now it's time to put the diff cover on, fill it with oil, and give it a little test shot. So I'll come back when the diff cover's on. All right, we got our diff cover on. So far I got one quart of fluid. And I'll be showing you what I'm using here. It's a whole lot better than the little pump. Let me go fill it back up. This thing even has the twisters on, off. It's pretty nice. I got it from Walmart. Transmission spout. I got it for the side by side to fill it with oil and figured this would work. 
screws on to the bigger jugs or the smaller jugs, but for some reason it won't screw on to that jug, so I have to put in the little quartz. But I am putting the synthetic in. Just put in the hole down there, open it. I'm not sure if with that new locker having so much more metal is going to affect the oil if it takes. Where is the plug? And it's dripping out. I mean this. All right, let me get the wife. We'll turn it on, roll it, and see what happens. Take it for a test drive soon. Here it is, moment of truth. Get down the highway. My windshield wipers are shot. I already got new ones waiting in the house. So the windshield's pretty blurry. Faster because the gauges are still programmed for the 410s the truck used to have. 
Noise free, baby. All right, well, that's it for this video. Next, we gotta get the bed on this thing and be done. So the next project that we might be picking up next weekend.